Hello, everyone. I'm Alfred Cromwell, the founder and president of City Tutoring. And actually, we're about to close here at City Tutoring, where normally our hours are Monday through Saturday. We do work Saturdays uh, from 9 a.m., either 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Usually, you know, even earlier than that, uh, depending on, but usually 8 o'clock we're uh, open for classes and things like that. Um, a lot of our courses begin at 8 o'clock, actually. Uh, one of the courses that we're offering in the fall semester begins at 8 o'clock. Uh, but anyway, we'll tell you more about that later on. But I decided to share with you a on this Saturday a quiz from a while back, a chapter two. Uh, it was covering the second chapter of our Algebra 2 course. And so some of you who are taking Algebra 2, you might find this of interest so that you can compare to maybe what you do at that level, uh, chapter one or chapter two of Algebra 2 at your school. Uh, I also have some announcements first. Next week, I will be doing a video on um, group theory. So all of you abstract algebra fans, you might like it. And I encourage you to watch it, even if you've never heard what a group is, or most likely you were not taught this at all. I will also tell you about the mathematician. Some of you know him already, but in case you don't, Niels Abel. Since we spoke about abelian groups some time ago, not too long ago, and many of you were shocked to have never learned about them in your very deficient schools. Uh, second announcement is that those of you who wrote me letters, I just, uh, you, the gentleman from, I have it here, the envelope, the gentleman from Oak Grove, Missouri, your letter is going out on Monday. It's, I will be, I will be sending it to the uh, post office. And the gentleman, uh, the kind gentleman also from Farmersville, Farmersville, California, your letter, my, my written response uh, will also be going out to you. And those of you who want to write me letters, you know where to find me. You can uh, mail me. You can write me a letter, 4925 Boonesboro Road, number 130, Lynchburg, Virginia, 24503. Uh, also, the second announcement is that, or the third announcement, really, matrices will also continue next week. And the last announcement is that I'm, I'm almost done filming with my 8 millimeter uh, camera. I don't know if you can probably see it, but this is my 8 millimeter uh, Sekonic micro eye film camera. I'm almost done with the filming, so we shall see how, how that turns out. And of course, I will share the results. I will upload the video. Once I get the 8 millimeter developed, I will share the results with you. If you read a little bit of background on that, on why I do that, so if you if you read my community post, I had no idea, honestly, uh, I'm always speaking honestly anyway, but I, I, I say this with emphasis. I had no idea that my community posts would, would have turned out to be so popular, but apparently they are. Uh, and so if you read not the post from today, but the one from yesterday, uh, I spoke in a little bit more detail about the a little bit of what I used to do with eight millimeter and 16 millimeter film cameras back in the days of my youth. But, but anyway, uh, we'll talk about that more when the time comes. So uh, what I'm going to share now with you is the quiz without the answers first, right? I want you to try the quiz first on your own if you're an Algebra 2 student and uh, see how you do because I'm going to cover the answers, of course, in the, uh, in the second part of the video. But uh, I'm not going to share the document with you because what I have found is when I've tried to do things in goodwill, People email me. They say, oh, I want a copy of the quiz. Uh, then I send them the copy of the quiz uh, or my assistant does. And then we never hear a response back. No one ever emails it back. So that's uh, that it's a waste of time. So if you are serious about something, you can always email us and uh, and you can get copies of things uh, in exchange for a fee, of course, because that's unfortunately we, ha we have had to do that to make to separate people who are serious from and people who are not. So here is the quiz. All right, so you should be seeing on your screen the quiz. I'm going to try and make it a little bit larger so that if you want to take a picture of it um, or if you want to follow along, there are 10 questions. Usually my quizzes are 10 questions, by the way, 10 points each. So the instructions are answer each question as indicated. The student is required to write the name, obviously the date. You answer each question as indicated. No calculators are permitted under any circumstances. You must show all your work on the uh, answer sheets provided when relevant, and you can use black ink 
or pencil uh, that must be used. And we, when we grade them, we grade in red ink, which is the, the classical way of doing things, at least for the past uh, several decades. Um, and I know some, pl- I'm, I'm mentioning this because I've heard some clowns, some, they call themselves educators, but they're not. They say that that's negative and that, that only creates bad feelings. Go away. Some of you people are just, you're so pathetic. Go away. We don't want you in city tutoring. So the first question is you're going to write in simple form in M and state the degree of the following polynomial. So hopefully you can see it. The second question says express it as a simple, express as a polynomial in simple form. Then number three, you have a converse. You, you, you are to write the converse statement. Number four, you have interpret the given equation in two ways. And then it says include a suitable domain for the variable. Again, for context, this is chapter two. Uh, usually we give quizzes after every chapter. Um, so that's where this comes from. So this would be the beginning of algebra two, basically. So if you are, if, if these questions are easy for you, then that's a good sign that at least the first two chapters, are, if they're not easy for you, then you should not, and you are in algebra two, then you should really reconsider being in algebra two at this point. Um, the, for, the fifth question is to graph. And if you don't know what that symbol is, I'm sorry, but you should know what it is. Um, number six, it's solving for H. You, your teacher might use the expression in terms of, but either way is fine. Uh, and then B says find H when V equals 157 and D equals 10. Use pi for, use 3.14 for pi. We have to specify that because pi is not just 3.14, as I hope you all know that. But usually when you're doing with these type of problems, you keep it at 3.14. Then number seven is a proof question. Prove that the corollary one is greater than zero is a byproduct of the theorem discussed in class that says if a denotes a real number and a does not equal zero, then a squared has to be greater than zero. And then I ask you to uh, be sure to provide the reasons for your steps. Then number eight is a word problem. Uh, Number nine is a problem of subsets. And number 10 is a basic equation. So these are the problems. Have a look at them. You can try them. I encourage you to try them on your own. This is seven through 10. And I'll show you one through six again are these you can try them once you have your answers you can uh, i'm going to go over the answers now by the way and you can let me know in the comments if you got them all right or how many you got wrong i'm curious all right so here are the solutions um for number one it says write in simple form and m and state the degree well The polynomial is already in uh, simple form, and the degree here is 5, right? Remember that the degree, those of you who are studying Algebra 2, I don't know if you've covered this yet, but the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents, right? So in all of these, the sum is 5. So we would say that this is a polynomial with a degree of 5. The second question is... Uh, expressed as uh, in simple form. So you should have had 12a squared minus 11ab minus 12a plus 14b. It's an easy question. All you have to do, uh, all it's really testing is just the, uh, well, two things, the distributive property as well as uh, the laws of exponents. If you multiply um, terms to see what you do with the exponents, that's all it is. Number three, the converse of if you take a bath, then you get wet. Well, if you get wet, then you take a bath but they may not be necessarily true. Just keep that in mind. Number four, you should have had um, the answer here, n equals 20. And the domain, the set of real numbers, but since it's asking you to interpret it, if it involves countable things, then it is more precise to say the positive integers. It really depends on what you are modeling in this case, but from a purely algebraic perspective, you could say the set of real numbers. Um, number five, I didn't draw it because I don't like drawing, but basically it would be a closed circle at one open circle at three. 
This is what we call interval notation. Make sure you know interval notation. And it goes from, um, so H is an element. And we have negative two thirds intersection at one to infinity, which equals one and three. All right, uh, number six, uh, for A, you should have had H equals 12V over pi D squared. And if you plug in for part B, all you had to do was plug in uh, 3.14 for pi and D equals 10, so you get six. Number seven, this one had a variety of ways. Um, so I'm not going to get into all the ways, but you can let me know in the comments how you did this one. And what axioms, what I'm looking for here is what axioms you used. And I should have here a squared. All right. Um, next thing you should have for number eight, between 117.5 and 122.5. For number nine, you should have had B equals two, three, four, and six. And here is the, the justification of it. If you are not familiar with sets at all, um, I'm concerned about you. You should email City Tutoring if you want to set course on set theory. And number 10 y equals negative one fourth y equals one seventh all i was testing here is the zero property you should know that the zero property right each if something's going to equal zero when being multiplied the factors have to equal one of the factors has to equal zero so we set both of them equal to zero here any number times zero is zero all right so if you got all of them correct obviously you got 100 uh, for each one that you did get wrong, they're 10 points each. So if you got one wrong, 90, two wrong, 80, anything below a 70, you should consider that you failed. All right. Uh, so if this was useful to you, let me know. Uh, let me know if some of these questions are familiar to you. What they're. I'm curious to see what you're covering in your schools for Algebra 2. Let me know. Keep me posted. Thank you all. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And tomorrow, Sunday, we'll be talking about the moral questions of the day.